You're listening to Her Brilliant Health Radio, episode number 40. She used to deliver babies, but now she delivers exceptional wellness for women. Welcome to Her Brilliant Health Radio, where holistic women's health expert and board-certified OBGYN, Dr. Kieran Dunstan, shares revolutionary insight from leading experts on what you need to know today to treat the root cause of disease, heal, and create the radiant health you've been searching for. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Kieran here with another episode of Her Brilliant Health Radio. Today we're going to talk about mood and hormones. If you're a woman, you've probably thought at one time or another, if you've had a bad mood, maybe my hormones are off. Well, Dr. Deb Matthew is going to spell it out for you today so that you can know definitively if that's true or not. Let me tell you a little bit about her. She's an international best-selling author of This Is Not Normal, A Busy Woman's Guide to Symptoms of Hormone Imbalance, and award-winning speaker on the topic of wellness and hormones. She's the founder and medical director of Signature Wellness, offering advanced medical care. She's a thought leader who has shared the stage with Suzanne Summers at Harvard and is a diplomat of and lecturer for the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, as well as a frequently featured medical expert on ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox TV. Please welcome Dr. Deb Matthew. Hey, it's so great to be here. I think this is an important topic to talk about because so many women do experience problems with their mood, and it's hard to know, could it be your hormones? Yes, it is hard to know. And with mood disorders rampant, um, antidepressant, anti-anxiety medication usage is on the rise. And oftentimes women are not sure. And oftentimes, frankly, their primary care provider is not sure. Um, Or doesn't even consider that possibility at all. Exactly. And if you're listening, maybe you've discussed this with your doctor and they've tried to give you an SSRI, so Prozac, Zoloft, or they've put you on anti-anxiety medication, maybe Xanax or Valium, and really never stop to consider, even if you're on birth control pills or some other type of hormonal contraceptive, or depending on what stage of life you're in, that, oh, it might be a hormonal problem. So this is why we really want to highlight this topic for you so that you can be aware and you can ask questions at your doctor about, do you think it could be my hormones? Right. You know, hormones are so important to who we are inside. They're so important to how we feel, how we relate to other people, how we react to the world around us, whether the world seems like a safe place or a scary place. And when your hormones are off, it really doesn't feel good. And you just don't quite feel right, but you can't always put your finger on it. And sometimes the symptoms change with your monthly cycle. And so some days you're fine and some days you're really not. And, and that can make it somewhat confusing. But I know that for me, the reason that I really got into this whole area was because I went through experiences myself where I really didn't feel my best. And for years, I felt exhausted all the time. Like my favorite thing in the whole world was to take a nap. I was, uh, had this belly fat. I just could not get rid of it no matter how hard I tried. And I was cold all the time. I took a sweater everywhere, even in July, because I froze in air-conditioned restaurants and the refrigeration section at the grocery store was just the worst. But I'd been feeling this way for so long that I just accepted that it was normal for me. I just thought that I was a cold-natured person who needed way more sleep than everybody else. And when I went into my late 30s, things got way worse. I started getting anxious for no reason. I just would wake up in the middle of the night with panic attacks. And I was flying off the handle with my kids way too often. I have four boys. And when you have boys, you just have to let things go, right? They're loud. They're dirty. It's sort of a survival mechanism. And I used to be very patient and very calm with them. But my calm voice went completely out the window. And I got an exorcist voice. And if I heard somebody kicking the soccer ball in my living room, my head would spin and steam would come out of my ears. And I would shriek at them to get the ball out of my house. And honestly, that exorcist voice made them move way faster. But that was not the kind of mom that I wanted to be. 
And I remember one time my husband and I were out for dinner. We're celebrating our anniversary. We're enjoying a lovely glass of wine. And he just commented, you know, I don't really like this glass of wine as well. I really prefer that other kind of wine better. And just like that, my brain started thinking, who is this barbarian that I am married to who could possibly like that wine better than this one? What was I thinking? And you know, he's a great guy. He's the love of my life. And I didn't know what was going on in my head, all this crazy thoughts. But eventually he got fed up because I wasn't, I wasn't me. I knew that this wasn't normal. I knew that this was not right. But it was so confusing because nothing in my medical training helped me to understand what was going on. And eventually he kind of reached his limit and he handed me a book that he wanted me to read. And it was a book about women's hormones called The Sexy Years. And I can guarantee you that it was nothing like that in my house. <laughs> but it was a book written by Suzanne Summers. And, you know, as you know, medical doctors do not like to get their information from celebrities, right? But I knew that I had to do something and, and I didn't know what else to do. So I read the book. And when I read about the other women in the book who were just like me and how much better they felt when they had their hormones balanced, it really gave me hope. Everything that I was feeling suddenly made so much sense mm -hmm. and it really allowed me to open my mind. And I learned that there were places that I could go to really be trained. I learned that there was science behind this and there's so much more that we can do in order to get back to feeling like ourselves again. And so as a result, I was able to resolve the hormone issues that were turning me into this crazy person where I felt like I was losing my mind and I nearly lost my husband. So I got my energy back. My kids got their mom back. My husband got his wife back and I got my life back. But I just couldn't go back to the old way of practicing medicine, which was just always writing prescriptions to cover up the symptom. Mm -hmm. So normally, if you go to your doctor and you're complaining that you feel like your emotions are out of control and you're feeling anxious, it's automatic. You get a prescription for an anxiety pill or an antidepressant, but that's really just kind of putting a band-aid on the symptom. It's really not getting to the root of the problem. And it's, you know, those medications... Sometimes they help. I mean, I'm not against medications, but especially antidepressants, a lot of the time they prevent you from falling into the pits of despair, but they're not happy pills. They don't make you happy. They just prevent the worst of the worst. So if you're in the pits of despair, by all means, do what you need to do to get out of that. But when you just don't feel right, when you know that there could be better, a lot of times the prescription medicines don't quite get you all the way there. And there's so much more that we can do if we think about hormones. Right. And so you touched on a lot of interesting things there. So it's interesting. I learned as a physician about functional medicine from Suzanne Summers, also from a book that a patient had given me called Breakthrough. And I had been treating her and doing our usual OBGYN things, you know, birth control pills for one, and she wasn't getting better. And then she came back the next year and she was like a new person. And I said, what have you been doing? And she said, I saw a doctor who does functional medicine and I brought you this book. I learned about it in this Suzanne Summers book, but it's so funny because I didn't read it for the longest time because I said, what, if, what am I going to learn? No, doctors do not like to learn from celebrities what am I going to learn from Suzanne Summers, three, right. you know, from Three's Company? Right. But thank God I did. So I can relate to your story and bless your husband and bless my patient. I call her my angel mm. um, for yeah. introducing us to this. And, and also the fact that we were open to it, because I'm sure there's some doctors who have come across it who haven't. Uh, right haven't so and i love that you you really embraced it and used it for yourself as i did and now it's transformed your life your health your life yes. your patients lives my health my life my patients lives and it's you know once you know better you do better i think yes. oprah says that i love that um and 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 all the symptoms that you detailed are very familiar to me and people listening and patients. And it's funny because when we talk about hormones, I think that people get this idea in their head that we're only talking about female hormones, estrogen, progesterone. 
but there's so many others and you described some of the symptoms there. So maybe let's go start talking about individual hormones and what symptoms yeah. people might be having. Cause you talked about being cold, which I had all the time and that's relates to thyroid. And right. so let's get into that. Talking yeah. about the different. So I already knew that I was hypothyroid. I'd been diagnosed 10 years ago. And when they, when I got diagnosed, um, it's because I, I wasn't getting pregnant. They were looking for why. They found out that I was hypothyroid. I got started on the thyroid medicine. I've had four kids, but I never felt any better. So I could take the medicine. I could forget to take my thyroid prescription for a whole week. And not because I was trying to be a bad patient, but I just couldn't tell any difference. I just forgot. Mm -hmm. and, um, I had all the symptoms of low thyroid, but because my lab test was normal, I thought normal, I was normal, quote unquote. It was normal. And <laughs> that's what they teach us, right? If your thyroid is low, we give you the standard prescription Synthroid or one of the generics until your lab tests are normal and then we're done. And if you don't feel better, then maybe you need an antidepressant or maybe you need to get up and go exercise, which is like exactly what every exhausted person really wants to hear, right? right? But, but when we give you your medicine, if your lab test is normal, how you feel is really completely irrelevant because we are trained to just follow the number on the test. But when I learned more about functional medicine, I learned that there's so much more that we can do. And my, I, I changed the kind of thyroid that I was taking to something more natural. And when I did all the other things, all of those symptoms are gone. And I don't have any of those symptoms anymore. I feel like a completely different person. And, I, and, I even have a, just a little story is um, I went to Thailand this year. I went to a medical mm -hmm. conference in Bangkok and I forgot my thyroid pills at home. So I had to search through Bangkok to try to find this natural kind of thyroid medicine. And I finally eventually did find some. And so I took some, but when I got home, I could tell I just didn't feel the same. So I went back to my old, you know, my, my standard thyroid mm -hmm. pills from here. And at Christmas time, I ran out of my prescription. I was busy. It was Christmas. I couldn't get into my doctor. I didn't really make a priority of it. I figured I'll just use these Thailand pills. And I was on them for about a month and gradually, gradually, all those symptoms started to creep back again. And it yeah. took me a long time to kind of put two and two together. And I finally felt, felt you know, I don't think these pills are working for me. I, I got to put the Thailand pills away. Let's go for the real stuff. You know, the, the American right. stuff. Within one thyroid pill, mm -hmm. I could feel blood flowing to my feet. They weren't cold anymore. I could tell this huge difference in how I'm feeling. So it, it just reminded me what a tremendous impact our thyroid hormones have yeah. on our body. So, so many women, first of all, they get told they're normal because their thyroid labs are somewhere in the normal range, even if they're not really optimal. But I also see a lot of women where maybe their thyroid gland actually is fine, but there are so many other things that can prevent the thyroid hormone from actually working right. for them when yep. they're stressed, when they're inflamed, if they're nutritionally, you know, don't have all the vitamins and minerals they need because of a digestive problem. So there's a, li a long list of reasons why your thyroid hormone might not be working for you and you legitimately feel hypothyroid, but when your doctor measures just a standard screening test, it lands in the normal range and you're told everything is normal and you get dismissed. And that is so frustrating. I feel uh, the most common thing that I hear when people come in to, to see me is, I just know I don't feel normal. I just wanna feel like myself again. Right. But the second most common thing that I hear is, I thought it had to be my thyroid, but I went to my doctor and they tested it and they said it was normal. Right. Right. And, and I find that about 80% of women who were told their thyroid was quote unquote normal by their regular doctor, when we do the right tests right. and we read them for optimal values, they actually do have low functioning thyroid. Uh, and then there's a significant portion that have the subclinical, like you described, the tests will even be normal, but there are all those factors that go into having it received the message that it's bringing to the cells received properly right. so that can be blocked. And so if you're listening and you're thinking, Oh, well, yeah, I have always had cold hands or cold feet, or I'm always cold in general, or, you know, common signs would be constipation, um, eyebrow thinning, um, fatigue, especially in the afternoon. And sometimes waking up in the middle of the night is a, is a common symptom as well. And definitely weight gain. Yes. Definitely. If you have a weight issue, most 
likely you have, you have a thyroid issue too. So when we're talking about hormones, we're not just talking about female hormones. Right. We're talking about your battery, your thyroid, and let's talk, let's get into cortisol because that's a huge one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stress is one of the number one causes of hormone problems for women. And when you feel stressed, we're talking about all kinds of different kinds of stress, first of all, right? So we're talking about the emotional stresses that you know about. So you're busy, you're worried, you got all kinds of stuff going on, you're overscheduled. You're kind of aware of those stresses. So that's important. But there's also physiologic stress. So if you are nutritionally depleted or if there's too much inflammation in your body or if you have allergies or a low-grade infection, all of those things are stresses on your body too. And sometimes there can be major stresses that you don't even know about. So it can be toxins in the environment or mold in the walls of your home, or there can be things that happened to you 20 years ago that are still affecting you, you know, emotionally that you're maybe not consciously thinking about, but all of those factors put together are the stress that, that your body has to deal with. And your body responds to stress the same way, whether it's emotional stress, physiologic stress, or whether there's a famine by boosting your cortisol production in order to help you survive. So you need to have enough cortisol in order to function and cortisol regulates all your other hormones. So when cortisol is elevated or if it's too low, like it's, it, you're not able to make enough for you to get you through the day, that's a problem. And there's a certain release of cortisol. There's a circadian rhythm. And it's supposed to go way up in the morning. It's supposed to go down in the afternoon. It's supposed to be low overnight. And that helps us with our normal circadian rhythm. So what's supposed to happen is that in the wee hours of the morning, your cortisol level rises so that your eyes pop open and you leap from your bed ready to start the day. It's like a little adrenaline rush. Cortisol is like long acting adrenaline. And for a lot of people, they don't get that nice peak in the morning. So they're pressing snooze on their alarm and they're crawling out of bed over to the coffee pot mm -hmm. because caffeine helps to boost cortisol levels so that you can function like a normal human being. And then they get that crash later on in the day. And then for some people, if they stay up late enough at night, now they get a second wind and they can't go to sleep and the whole cycle continues. So whether cortisol is too high, whether it's inappropriately low, or whether it's that circadian rhythm that is off cycle, you know, too high at one time of the day, too low at the other time of the day, all of those factors are going to influence many other things. So it affects all your other hormones. It affects your immune system and your blood sugar regulation and all kinds of things. So it's a really critical hormone to talk about. Yeah. And uh, if you're suffering with a weight problem, it, it has a lot to do with weight. So if you've got that middle tire, that's usually a cortisol problem. Um, your sleep-wake cycle, as you said, your energy, your immune system, which is the, the biggest issue because that doesn't always show up right up front. And sometimes will show up down the line where you're getting sick more frequently and, and actually a cancer is an immune system failure as well. And most people don't realize that. So if you're getting colds a lot, viruses, you're susceptible, then it's something that you really need to pay attention to because your body actually makes small cancers every day, but your immune system comes behind and corrects it so you don't get cancer. So you want to take care of your immune system. And that means taking care of your cortisol. So this, I always call it, I used to call it king cortisol. Now I call it queen cortisol. <laughs> yes, I work with women, right? So um, queen cortisol is really, uh, I think, the most important hormone, although how do you pick thyroid or cortisol? Mm -hmm. um, so it also, if you're having adrenal fatigue, which means really low cortisol on a consistent basis, that in and of itself can cause mood disturbance, Absolutely. depression, horrible anxiety, right? Where you're right. coming out of your, crawling out of your skin with right. anxiety. Yeah, you know, since cortisol is the hormone that's supposed to allow you to cope with stress, if you don't have sufficient amounts of cortisol, you can't cope with stress. Everything feels stressful. Getting to the grocery store and home again totally stresses you out. And you can kind of get to the point where you just want to crawl back into bed, pull the covers over your head, because it's all just too much to deal with. But yes, the world becomes a scary place instead of a safe place. And, you know, somebody says boo behind you and you hit the ceiling, like your reactions are... Mm -hmm. exaggerated. And um, I remember back when I wasn't feeling well, 
when my kids would be playing and they would be loud, right? I have four boys, they're always loud. But the noise was so stressful to me. I just couldn't deal with it. And, and that would make me turn around and shriek at them. So it, it, it was because I wasn't able to cope with the stresses of normal day-to-day -day life that I was reacting in a way. And it wasn't because I needed to be medicated with an anti-anxiety or an antidepressant. I just needed to strengthen my adrenal system so that I was able to cope with day-to-day -day life. I just needed to get my hormones back in balance. Right. And, and you described the head spinning around earlier. I think that's one of the signs of cortisol problems is the head <laughs> because you have no tolerance for normal life. And if that's you and you're listening, then it's certainly something that you want to ask about. Now let's talk about though diagnosing and testing because yeah. there's a big difference between mainstream medicine and functional medicine. So let's get into that. Okay. So if you march into your standard regular, you know, family doctor or gynecologist or whatever, all they have to offer is testing for like tumors and severe diseases. So that's not what we're talking about here. We're presuming that you don't have a tumor and you don't have a life threatening disease, but that's all that they know to look for. And so they might agree with you that stress is a cause of your problems, but they really have nothing to offer other than to pat you on the head and say, you know, you should reduce your stress, which like you don't need the doctor to tell you that, right? But if you go to a functional medicine doctor, there are a number of different ways of measuring cortisol. So um, the main point is that we want to be measuring it over the day. We don't just want a one-time measurement. So it can be measured in saliva. It can be measured in urine. There are different ways that it can be done, but we want to be able to see that um, rhythm over the course of the day. And there is a lot of information that we can get, but you're just not going to be successful getting that from your regular doctor. Right. So you definitely need a functional practitioner who can do the salivary or urinary or whatever type of test to have that diagnosed and there really is no drug to treat it. I always say, people say, well, why doesn't my regular doctor tell me about this? Because there's not, not a drug to treat it. So we, we treat it with lifestyle and supplements. And, right. and it is very treatable. And yes. I remember when I first started learning about functional medicine, I started off doing hormone replacement therapy. And so I would give people natural hormones but I was really just thinking about their sex hormones. And some people got a lot better, but there were quite a few people where it just wasn't quite right. And it wasn't until I properly learned how to treat this whole adrenal system that people really got to feeling back to normal again. So it really can be treated, but it's, it's, um, it's not something that you're gonna get from your regular doctor, unfortunately. Yeah, definitely. So what are your other favorite hormones to look uh, at okay. having mood problems? Yeah. So let's talk about the dance between estrogen and progesterone. Mm -hmm. And any woman who has ever had PMS knows that there is a dance and there are some times of the month when the partners are stepping on their toes and you don't feel so good. So um, estrogen and progesterone levels are constantly fluctuating as you go through your menstrual cycle, different times of the cycle, there's a different balance. And that time right before your period is when progesterone levels are supposed to be at their peak. So the last two weeks of the month, right before your period, is when you're supposed to get a nice peak of progesterone. Progesterone is a hormone that is calming. It helps you just feel relaxed and everything is okay. It helps you to sleep soundly through the night. Maybe not so much that it helps you fall asleep, but it gets you into that nice deep restorative sleep so you can wake up feeling refreshed the next day. But as we get into our late 30s and into our 40s, we don't do such a good job at producing progesterone. And so when, you know, what might have been like one day of irritability before your period can stretch to three days, a week, 10 days, two weeks, and the symptoms can get much more severe. So irritable, anxious, negative, critical, impatient, just not so nice. And sometimes you can know in your brain that whatever that other person is doing, it's really not that bad, but you can't help feeling like this on the inside. And sometimes we know we just need to keep our lips zipped, but we just can't help saying whatever that unwarranted comment is because we just feel it that way. And um, that's another one that if you go to the doctor and you're having PMS mood symptoms that are really 
you know, more than just a day or two. Like it's, it's really to the point where it causes a problem because it can cause a problem, right? Oh, this affects that. your children, your spouse, your coworkers. If you have to work in customer service, it can affect, you know, how you treat your clients. Mm -hmm. um, but so if it's causing a problem and you go in to complain about that, there is one solution, which is birth control pills. I suppose there's another solution, which is an antidepressant. Antidepressant, that, um, there are two solutions. Birth, birth control, control solution. for women, that's what we get. Birth control pills, antidepressants. Right, and neither one of them is really getting to the root of the problem, which is usually that, you know, this estrogen progesterone balance is off. And for, for many women, restoring that natural progesterone that, that, you know, whether it's a week or two weeks before their menstrual cycle really just helps them feel calm and relaxed and like themselves. Because the typical pattern is that you're on your period and that week after your period, that's usually the good week. That's the week when your energy is up and you're cleaning out your closets and you got to the yoga class and you're eating your broccoli and then mid-cycle you ovulate and then it kind of goes downhill from there. And the week before your period, you're eating the ice cream and you don't feel like going to the gym and you're wearing your stretchy pants because you feel all bloated and yucky. Um, but so if you know that the week after your period, you are a perfectly happy, contented person and the week before your period, you're kind of, you know, ready to stab somebody in the back and you can't stand your husband. It's not him, right? It's, right. it's a hormone problem. Yeah. If you feel bad every day the same, then maybe not. I mean, it may be something else. But when it right. fluctuates, that with your it could be a hormone problem, but it could be other things too. Right. Right. And, and, and as you go get to 35, 40 and your eggs are getting older, your ability to make the progesterone is, is lowering. And then you're in that perimenopause stage going up towards menopause. And, and um, let's talk a little bit about menopause. The party line from mainstream medicine is that it's an estrogen deficiency, but really the majority of women are progesterone deficient. And most of us actually have enough uh, estrogen because the fat tissue makes it. And so the standard that you'll get at the regular doctor's office, you want to talk about the difference there too? Yeah. So yeah. basically if you haven't had a period or things are changing, they'll give you estrogen. A lot of times it's a synthetic chemical that, you know, it's not normal to a human body, but it's, it's a chemical that tries to mimic estrogen, which has some of the same benefits and some not. Um, sometimes you'll get the kind of estrogen that is from the horse's urine, the premarin, um, which is natural, but it has things in it that are not the same as what women typically have. And sometimes you'll just get birth control pills um, mm -hmm. in order to kind of help you through this process. But none of those things really quite fixes the underlying problem. And um, what we really want to start with is measuring your hormone levels. We want to know, are you one of the women that needs more estrogen or are you still making estrogen and you're what we call estrogen dominant, meaning you still got some estrogen, but you don't have the progesterone anymore, and that's why you're not feeling good. Um, so the other thing that's kind of different in functional medicine compared with traditional medicine is we, in traditional medicine, we only think about progesterone and your uterine lining. So for whatever reason, if you've had a hysterectomy, then we wouldn't give you progesterone because you don't have a uterine lining. We don't have to worry about it. Because we know that in the past, when we used to give women very high doses of estrogen replacement therapy, because we didn't really know better, we were causing uterine cancers because we were overstimulating the uterine lining. And we figured out that if we give you a drug version, well, if we give you progesterone, that we could protect your uterine lining. And the only thing that was really available was a drug that tried to mimic progesterone. And over time, that's the type of hormone that's become associated with breast cancer. So it's kind of um, you know, hormones fell out of favor for a while there. Mm -hmm. But in functional medicine, we know that you have progesterone receptors everywhere in your body. And the part of you that actually has the most progesterone receptors is your brain. And we've just finished talking about how progesterone has such a profound impact on your brain. And so we give progesterone to all of our patients who have a brain, regardless <laughs> of whether or not they have a uterus. And we want balance between the estrogen and progesterone all the time, um, not only worrying about what you're, what's going on with your uterine lining. Right. And, and for, the, for everyone listening, those synthetic progesterones are called progestins. Right. And they were what were shown in the Women's Health Initiative study to increase the risk of breast cancer and other diseases. So you definitely don't want that. 
but Dr. Deb is absolutely right. You, if you have a brain, you have more progesterone receptors in your, in your brain and estrogen than anywhere else in your body. And so just think about it. What does that tell you? Mm, cognition, it's important for thinking. Mood, very important. Yeah. So if you're in that menopausal range and you're having depression or anxiety, a lot of times this is the, the main cause of it. Yeah. And so getting your hormone levels checked and having your replacement hormones bring you to physiologic levels can really help with mood. Right. And then there are some women who really do need estrogen replacement. Mm -hmm. And estrogen is so important for brain health as well. So estrogen is super important for energy, it's super important for memory. So one of the most common things that I hear women complain about is they can't find that word they want to say, or they can't remember that person's name. I mean, I had an experience where um, I was at a get together and I was talking to a friend of mine. We've been friends for years and years and somebody else walked up. So the most appropriate thing to do was to introduce them. And for the life of me, I just couldn't think of her name. And I was so mortified. This is somebody I've known for years, but those little things happen um, with our memory. And, um, you know, you walk in the kitchen and then you can't remember what you went in there for. So those kinds of things are very common things as estrogen levels drop. But estrogen is also really important for mood. So serotonin mm -hmm. is a chemical in our brain that's responsible for peace and joy. And a lot of the antidepressant medicines try to work on serotonin levels. So things like Prozac and Celexa, mm -hmm. there's a lot of them. But serotonin receptors in your brain need estrogen to work. And so as your estrogen levels go down, sometimes the serotonin doesn't work in your brain that well. And so if we can just restore natural levels of estrogen, then the serotonin works again and you feel so much better. And that's a really typical thing that I find is if I take someone who's sort of going through this journey of perimenopause and menopause a lot of times their regular doctors put them on some kind of antidepressant to try to help get them through. Mm -hmm. But once we get their hormones balanced, then we can get rid of their antidepressant. They feel great. They feel in fact mm -hmm. often better because the antidepressants, they can suppress sex drive. They can make you gain weight. They often, um, like we said, you like, they keep you from the pits of despair, but they don't, you know, they don't make you feel great. So you're kind of numb you know, you don't really experience all the joy, um, all the emotions. So estrogen is very important for your mood too. Right. And I loved how you highlighted the interplay between the serotonin and the estrogen. And what women need to understand is that neurotransmitters, which are essentially kind of mini hormones because they're secreted in one place and given action at another, just like big hormones, big sister hormones are secreted up in the um, hypothalamic pituitary area and then go to through the bloodstream to other organs. So there's an interplay among all neurotransmitters and hormones that is really a very intricate and delicate balance. And if you have some hormones off, it's going to pull other hormones off and, and they're related to neurotransmitters too. And so, for instance, with the sex hormones that we're talking about, let's talk a little bit about sex drive because that's a huge concern for women. And women always think, oh, it's my estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, or usually just testosterone, I find is what most women right. think. But I always say those are necessary, but not sufficient. Right. Right? Yes. So do you want to talk about that? In fact, yes. One yeah. of the more common things that I see in women who are low thyroid is... Um, is lack of sex drive. It, it, you know, you're tired and you're, you're not getting blood flow to your extremities. So your hands and your feet are cold, but you're not getting blood flow to that part of you either. So um, when your thyroid is low, sex drive often goes away. When your cortisol is off, whether it's high or low or dysregulated up and down, a lot of times we see that, um, you know, interest in sex just kind of evaporates when you have blood sugar problems because insulin is off, which is another hormone. So yes. They're, all of these hormones affect each other. They all work together. And so you really need to have the big picture. So that's why I was saying a lot of times I would give women hormone replacement therapy and some things would get better, but they just never felt right until we looked at the big picture. 
Right. And so it's necessary, not sufficient. You have to look at all, I call these the big, big seven hormones when, when, when we include DHEA with mm -hmm. cortisol. And uh, you really need to have all of them looked at for a balanced picture. And then there are other ancillary hormones too. So let's talk a little bit about oxytocin. Mm -hmm. the hormone. Yeah, so oxytocin is uh, one of the hormones that is released um, when we are feeling, it's released after sex. It makes us feel intimate um, and, and uh, close to another person. It makes us um, want to touch and embrace. And it's very important in our um, interest in intimacy. And it's a really common one to be problematic. And that can also play a role. So we can give you estrogen replacement, testosterone replacement. But if that one's a problem, then we're not really going to get you where you need to be. Yeah, I have had some experience with some oxytocin nasal sprays that with varying degrees of success with people, um, sometimes that, that can help if, if there's a deficiency and women are feeling that, uh, you know, that empty nest aloneness. Mm -hmm. um, so that sometimes is something that I found that can help also with the depression and anxiety. And um, I know that you're going to give everyone a free copy of your book, This Is Not Normal. So they're going to be able to read more about the symptoms of hormone imbalance. How would you advise anyone listening to go about if they're having mood disturbance, maybe they're having depression, maybe they're swinging depression to kind of a more manic down to depression, or they're having anxiety, and maybe they've been put on mood stabilizers, um, lithium, or maybe they've been put on antidepressants, anti-anxiety, how, what would be the top three steps you would have them take to start addressing that in a more functional, holistic way? So I think the first thing that I would say is to try to um, do something to manage stress because stress affects cortisol, cortisol knocks all the other hormones out of whack. So that's a really, really important one to start with. And there's lots of things we can do, meditation, breathing exercises, walking, but do your best to try to simplify your life, try to reduce stress, try to help there as a, as a first necessity, no matter what else you do. Um, and then the next thing that I would say is to really try to clean up your diet, because a lot of times I find that sometimes women will come in mm -hmm. and we'll send them out to go and you know get their hormones tested, but we'll give them some nutrition instructions for while we're waiting so that we can do something. And by the time they come back, already they feel so much better, they're sleeping better, they're feeling, you know, their mood is better, and we haven't even got the answers of what's wrong with their hormones yet because things have already gotten into balance. So cutting out sugar, eating you know vegetables, doing a better job with their diet. But then the third thing that I would say is to find a functional medicine doctor to help you because mm -hmm. this is confusing. The hormones, you know, often have similar actions, you know, like they overlap. Um, and so if you're feeling this symptom, is it because of your thyroid? Is it because of your cortisol? You know, they, it's, it's really hard to know without just getting a test done. And you really want to go to a functional medicine doctor because if it's not just, it's not enough for us to give you hormone replacement therapy, which, you know, your gynecologist can give you some kind of hormone replacement therapy. Your family doctor probably would give you some kind of hormone replacement therapy, but, but we really want to know your unique pattern. And we really want to get to the root of why your hormones are out of whack in the first place. And so sometimes that means we got to work on getting your gut healthy and we need to detoxify because a lot of the chemicals in the environment are hormone disruptors. And so they, they, interfere with how your hormones work. So if you work with a functional medicine doctor, they can help you navigate this because it can be complicated. It can feel overwhelming. Um, and it doesn't have to be. It's very rewarding. These problems are fixable. I believe that you can get well, get off prescription medicines and love the way you feel if we can get your hormones balanced. But, but it takes working with someone who can help you. Right. So I love that. So everybody listening, number one is look at your stress. What's one thing you could do today to start managing stress better? If you're someone who's heard me talk about meditation a gazillion times, maybe today's the day you do it for five minutes and you try it. And number two, start cleaning up your diet. And we've done other episodes that talk about that. And so you know what you need to do if you're listening. So just pick one of them and start doing it. Uh, maybe it's just increase your antioxidant intake with, with 
fruits today. And uh, number three, working with someone who's expert in functional medicine, the function of the systems of the body, whether it's hormonal, gastrointestinal, and really looks at you as a whole and understands the interplay between and among the different systems, that might be a wonderful gift to, to give yourself today. So thank you so much, Dr. Deb, for all the wonderful information you shared. Hopefully everyone, I think they do, have a great idea about what their main hormonal concerns are should be when it comes to mood and they really have a solid foundation to know how to move forward and some things that they could do today. So I thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Thank you. And the name of the podcast is Her Brilliant Health. So I'd love it if you could share with everyone what that means to you because you certainly exemplify it. So I believe that we all deserve to love the way we feel. And so to me, that means giving yourself permission to take care of yourself, because especially as women, we are so busy looking after our kids and our husband and probably our parents and our dog and our house and our job, and we put ourselves last. But you can't feel good if you're not taking care of yourself, mm -hmm. and you have to put yourself somewhere higher up on that priority list and know that you can't take care of all those other people who depend on you if you're not looking after yourself first. Absolutely, so put, put yourself first, definitely. Thank you so much for all the information and wisdom you shared. And everybody, we're gonna give in the show notes the URL where you can go get Dr. Deb's free book, This Is Not Normal, A Busy Woman's Guide to Symptoms of Hormone Imbalance. Thank you so much for sharing that. And where else can they find out more about you? Uh-huh. So I have uh, a website called DebraMatthew.com that has a lot of my um, TV appearances and, and public speaking that I've done. Mm -hmm. And my practice website is SignatureWellness.org. Wow. And, you know, I, I wrote this book in the first place because I find that women often don't know whether their hormones could be a problem. And mm -hmm. so it has a lot of quizzes. It really has a lot of information to help you find out whether this is something that you really do need to do something about. Great. So if you're thinking, oh, I've got mood problems, I'm not sure if it's my hormones, definitely go to the website, download the book, do the quizzes, and see if this could be an issue. And then take some action steps to find out more specifically for you. So thank you for that wonderful resource. Thank you so much and for all the information that you've shared. Thank, thank you, you for joining me for this episode of Her Brilliant Health Radio. Hopefully you are inspired to take action on some new information you received today. A step towards the bountiful, blissful, beautiful vitality that you deserve. If you have health topics and questions you'd like addressed, please message me on my Facebook page or visit KieranDunstonMD.com and let me know. I'd love to help. Remember to share this podcast on social media and send it to your friends and family who could benefit from it too. If you love the show, please go right now to iTunes, write a review, and make sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll be the first to know when future episodes are available. Thank you again for joining me. And remember, achieving optimal health isn't magic, it's science. <laughs>